Hey, what's up everybody? It's the one, the only Alcor Starchild here, and this video I'm posting is actually a lot later than it was supposed to be posted out. I tried to get it out like two weeks ago, but I just had so much stuff going on, and I was trying to get it out, um, I think it was about two weeks ago, when I saw a video from the New York Post on YouTube where they were trying to discredit everything about Lou Alessandro. So I was just like, okay, so I listened to what they had to say, and I was like, wow, there's some really good, compelling stuff here. However, now, and so let me let me just play a little bit of that clip so you can hear it. Elizondo adopted and appropriated the name ATIP to describe this new, small, unfunded, and unofficial effort. Lakatsky has only done a handful of interviews since going public. Here's a revelatory clip from one of them on the Coast to Coast radio show where he specifically addresses this. The ATIP name was uh, created for a letter that Senator Reid sent in trying to establish a DOD SAP for our program for various reasons. Uh, and Lou used that name when he... And I guess it had to be in the time frame of 2012. And he used the name ATIP. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's, that's fine. But there was a difference between the two programs. Ours had $22 million in funding. His had zero. But he did his thing. We did ours. But I can say that we were the only game in town. So what did Lou Elizondo actually do? You know, the guy who everyone refers to as the director of ATIP, the Pentagon UFO program? Luis Elizondo, former director of the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Luis Elizondo ran the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program. The man who ran that secret program, Luis Elizondo, uh, thank you for joining us. Was he even involved in the official Pentagon program at all? In the 221-page book about the Pentagon UFO program, Elizondo appears one time. That's a bit strange, right? One time. At a 2009 dinner, sitting at a table with members of OSAP and Bass, where the authors claim he was telling war stories about his psychic powers. That's it. Well, Elizondo himself has stated multiple times on the record that he had nothing to do with OSAP, including this emphatic tweet, which says, It's been brought to my attention that despite my constant assertion in the media about my non-involvement in OSAP, some are under the false impression that I was part of it. For the record, again and again, I was not part of OSAP. Elizondo instead says he was in charge of the Pentagon's ATIP program, which I think we've established probably didn't even exist. Insiders say it was not an official program. It was a completely separate small initiative. A small unofficial effort. Not a program as the P in ATIP suggests, but more in his spare time, when his normal day job allowed, he looked for UFOs. Okay, so... What you heard there is them really like making a compelling argument saying that Lou Elizondro is, you know, a liar and just did, you know, all this UFO stuff on his spare time and he didn't have anything to do with ATIP. It wasn't anything that was real and, and nobody recognizes it in the military or in the government, right? Well, however, and I wanted to get this video out before the May 17th hearing was kind of come out. And also I was going to talk about the May 17th hearing and I was going to tell people, hey, you know, look. There's don't expect anything big, you know, um, it, this is just going to be more baby steps. He's that they won't ever put out anything big, no big mass of smoking guns unless they're pushed into doing it. They have to be pushed into doing that. So, and, and what is the push for doing that? Well, I don't know. Maybe like how everybody went down to, um, area 51 and they were going to storm area 51. Well, that, that forced the media to pay attention to what was going on. Now, if it wasn't that big of a deal, the media wouldn't have been talking about it. So it has to take something like that where a bunch of people have to go down to the Capitol. It has to be bigger than the sixth. Uh, it has to be massive where people are saying, you know, look, we want to know what's really going on. But just sitting on the Internet bitching and complaining isn't going to get you guys anywhere. 
you know, but anyhow, so then on the, on the May 17th, you know, it, they actually confirmed, you know, in front of Congress that ATIP was an actual real thing. So it completely null and voids and debunks the stuff that came from the New York Post and their entire, you know, video that they created and all this whole thing where they're going to look more into Lou Alessandro because they, you can hear right here, I'll play the clip in just a second where you can hear the congressmen say that and acknowledge that, yes, about ATIP. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for allowing me to join this hearing. Um, I really appreciate uh, the witness's testimony. Um, Mr. Moultrie, as the chairman uh, mentioned, uh, DOD had an initiative to study UFOs in the 1960s called Project Blue Book. It's also been well reported in our briefing and in, in other places that we have more, have more recent projects, specifically uh, ATIP. Could you describe any other initiatives that the DOD or DOD contractors have managed after Project Blue Book ended and prior to ATIP beginning? Did anything also predate Project Blue Book? So I, I, I can't speak to what may have predated uh, Project Blue Book. I mean, of course, there's Roswell and all these other things that people have talked about over the years. Um, I'm familiar with Blue Book. I'm familiar with, uh, with ATIP. Uh, I haven't seen other documented uh, studies that have been done by DOD in that regard. So you're not aware of anything in between Project Blue Book and ATIP? I'm not aware of anything that's uh, official that was done in between those two. And so there you go, guys. So anyhow, so I made this video where I was talking about, is Lou Alessandro a liar? And I didn't get a chance to get that out before, you know, in between of after seeing the Washington, the New York Post video and before the May 17th. So I'm going to post it now. I'm going to uh, play it now for you guys to go ahead and watch it. So you can hear my thoughts on what I had to say about what Lou Alessandro is or is not. Okay, so enjoy the video and, and I hope it clears some things up. I am broadcasting on all AM frequencies. I will be at the South Street Seaport every day at midday when the sun is highest in the sky. If you are out there, if anyone is out there, I can provide food. I can provide shelter. I can provide security. If there's anybody out there, anybody, please, you are not alone. Hey, what's up everybody? The one, the only Alcor Star Child, and today we're going to talk about Louis Alessandro. Is Louis Alessandro a liar? You want the short answer? Yes. Yes, he's a liar. Of course he's a liar. That is part of his job. What don't you understand? There's people out there who, right now, there's a video going around that's circulating around that's putting up all this stuff showing that, saying that, you know, hey, look, he lied about ATIP. So what? Who cares? You know, that he's you guys are all going to end up with egg on your face and I'm going to explain to you why look Louis Alessandro was in counterintelligence his job is to lie to bend the truth to manipulate truth to fabricate truth it is to lie but the overall objective is to get to something that is of substance for the country per se okay um so look that is what he did. He's told you over, and this is where everybody's going to end up with egg on their face that are out there going, oh, he lied about ATIP. He's been telling you from day one, don't make this about me, make it about the topic. And as long as he constantly said, do not make this about me, and he kept talking about people who kept trying to make things about him and talk about him instead of talking about the topic, he will come out squeaky clean on this because the government, if they wanted to come out with stuff and talk about UFOs and stuff, it is perfect to have somebody who is counterintelligent, who is considered not an employee of the American government anymore, which we know that's just not the truth, but to consider them not an employee of the American government anymore and to come out and give you kind of like being like a whistleblower and say, hey, yeah, there are UFOs and I was part of this program stuff. 
Look, if Luis Alessandro was really out doing something that the government did not want him to do, the CIA did not want him to do because he's ex-CIA, they would have got his ass and shut him down in an instant. He would have been done. So, and, and, and the other thing is, is that if he was just fabricating truth, there would have been enough people that would have came out and completely destroyed him. Now, there's like this one guy who was part of Allsap who now has, you know, uh, pretty much made it known that Lou Alessandro was not the head of this program called ATIP. But does it really matter? It doesn't. What matters is exactly what Lou was set out to do, exactly what he was ordered to do, to shed light on the subject of UFO and phenomena. And the whole fact that people going out trying to get FOIA acts on, you know, the ATIP and were having a hard time figuring out, you know, how come they couldn't get FOIAs, even Lou Alessandro said, you know, FOIA is not the end all be all of all the information. And he and the other thing is too is as long as you are focusing on ATIP, you are not focusing on uh, ASAP or ASAP or whatever the hell the other program was, which is pretty much the real program that everybody is now starting to focus on. So they, what they did was they used Alexandro, and he was willingly doing what he's supposed to do. They used him to get the door open. So that way they can move things around and, and get things done that they needed to get done before the focus started getting back to ASAP or ASAP. Because when he first came out, there were people that were saying that that is about ASAP and not about ATIP. But then that quickly went away and they just kept talking about a ATIP. <laughs> Gosh, it's, it's crazy. But anyhow, yeah, so look, if is Lou Alessandro a liar? Of course he is. All government employees are liars. Don't think don't think that they're not. Every single government employee, all the police, all the sheriff, all the people in the military, Air Force, Navy, Marines, they all at some point have been told to lie or have been nudged to lie to protect the government, to protect the system. That is what they do. If you don't understand that, you've never been in government. Every single person who's worked in the government knows exactly what I'm talking about. Everyone knows that somebody or themselves, most likely, I'm going to say they all have. They all have told a lie. They all had to lie about something. I don't care if it's small, because that small little lie may have covered up the tracks for something that was a much bigger lie. Right? It was a little diversion to keep you from looking at another lie that was far bigger. Yes, he's a liar. I did a video um, back about 10 months ago called uh, Louis Elizondro Watches My Videos. Go watch that video. I posted it up 10 months ago. I, I literally put it out there and I said back then that you're, you, you got to take him with uh, in a neutral position. You don't have to believe everything he says, but not everything he says is a lie, you know, and it's the same thing with this, you know, I, who cares about ATIP? It doesn't matter. What matters is, is the fact that May 17th, they're going to be bringing this up in front of Congress about UFOs. That is a good part to do with Louis Alessandro being in the forefront out there on CNN, C-SPAN, you know, all over the place pushing the fact that the government has been covering up stuff about UFOs. So now, yes, now you're getting more and more information. You're getting more stuff about more the government forced to actually look into the UFOs and all this and stuff. So yeah, he did the job he's supposed to do. Why are people getting hung up on the fact of whatever this acronym thing that he made up or may have not made up? Whether or not somebody's out there saying that you know hey i was in i was the head of allsap and there is no atip doesn't mean that 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 program didn't exist either you got to think a little bit deeper there are all kinds of programs that are that are covered up with other names and all kinds of, and he talked about that in an interview a long time ago that they would purposely make fake names for programs to cover up other programs atip covering up for Awesome. I mean, it's it's he's going to come out looking good on this and it, it ain't going to hurt him at any point. But when the time comes and the government tells him, OK, you've done enough. It's time to step away and to step back. He will disappear. 
and you guys most likely will not ever hear or see from him again. Like, that's the way it's set up. They, The government is using him to do what they want him to do. He's not a rebel. I said that in that video 10 months ago, that he's not some breakaway rebel from the, from the government who was counterintelligent, who's going to come out and say all this stuff. And also, too, the guy was counterintelligence. Do I have to say it again? The guy was counterintelligence. They're not going to... Counterintelligence guys who still has a security clearance is not going to be on television and, and getting clearance from... The, the government who runs, you know, the big media. All those big stations that had him on there, they he was approved. Come on, man. Wake up. The only thing that I want to know, the only thing, I don't really care about all the other stuff from Elizondro. The only thing I want to know was, was Louis Elizondro born in 1972? That's the only thing you should be asking that question. Was he born in 1972? And I'm going to say, I bet pretty much anything he was. And with that, enjoy the rest of the time you have left. Welcome. You can call me Red X, the ultra neutral, the one from 72. Doing more and more research and more digging, it now is more apparent to me that we are in a natural reality dealing with an alien species that has hacked time. And because of that, they have left a huge piece of evidence, which is the year 1972 and how that year actually connects to the year 2020 and how I am the only person in the world that is educating people and bringing the message and was able to predict the election in 2020 through great detail, Stand as well as Stand other predictions by. that also came true that have to do with looking at the year 1972 and the time hack and how how it affected the year 2020 and will lead us into civil war as well as a galactic war that is clearly upon all of us that is coming down and you'll see that evidence by coming here and looking at the evidence that I present. I'm also going to be teaching you things about how flying saucers work, things about different alien species like the reptilians, the Anunnaki and about the greys because I myself had a reptilian experience where my mind was unlocked and that is one of the great reasons why I'm able to present all of this knowledge because up until the year 2017 when my mind was unlocked not long after that I was starting to able to see the holes in the reality see all the connections of the things that were going on that led to a time hack which tells us learn from them and push forward as a humanity and not to suppress one another and suppress our own species so if you're ready to have your mind unlocked if you're ready to receive see the message that nobody else in the world is talking about. If you're ready to see the truth, if you're ready to understand and look at the evidence, then welcome to Rat X-Files.